Hello everyone, welcome back. This is a new lecture in your course, Linux for Absolute Beginners by Idionix. My name is Ahmed. In this section, we are going to discuss our new Linux desktop system. In the previous section, we have installed the system. We have, we have shown you different ways of installing our example system, Ubuntu, whether as a standalone system on a virtual machine or side by side with your existing operating system, which was Windows. In this section, we are going to introduce Linux as a desktop environment, you're going to see how you can use the different programs that get shipped with the system and how to get the most out of it. So first of all, let's discuss briefly the desktop environment. A desktop environment is defined as tools that display icons and menus on the screen. They control the appearance as well as they provide important programs and utilities that help you with common tasks like file management. A desktop environment is like the one you see here. This is our example system. This is Ubuntu. And as you can see here, this is what I mean by a desktop environment. If you recall from a previous lecture, when we pressed alt Control f one and we had this text mode, this is not a graphical user environment. This is, okay, I entered the password incorrectly. This is called a text environment. This is not a GUI. This is not a desktop environment. You can interact with the system here using text mode. But this one, brought by Control alt f 7 is the desktop environment. It is defined as those menus on the left, as you can see, this panel here containing like the current system time, the current language you're using. And of course, you can also place here some icons can double click on these icons and the programs will launch or a specific functionality is going to be executed. So this collectively is called a desktop environment. And as mentioned before, Linux is different from other operating systems in that it can have a number of different desktop environments and not just one. So for example, I have installed here in this version of Ubuntu, I have installed a Plasma KDE environment. This is one of the environments or one of the desktop environments that can be installed in Linux. If you want to have a look at it, you have to log out from your system in order to use a different desktop environment. I have just logged out of my system. And as you can see here, this is my name and this is the password. And inside this box, inside the login box, you can see here this icon on the right. I can click on this icon and it shows me a message, select desktop environment. Here I can select the Plasma KDA desktop environment that I have just installed. You have to install the desktop environment in order to be able to use it. So I have installed here the Plasma KDA desktop environment. If I type my password again using this environment, I will log in into a completely different desktop environment. It is the same system. It is the same programs and everything. However, I am logging into a different environment as we're going to see in a moment. Now, as you can see here, the environment has just loaded. Of course, it is completely different than the previous environment. The previous environment was having this shortcut bar here on the left. Here, it is having this bar at the bottom and it does not have the icons that were present. We have here the clock it was placed here in the previous environment. Now it's placed here at the bottom and you have a completely different set of even the, even the icons itself are drawn differently. As you can see here, you can add a widget, for example, if you've used an Android phone before, this is just a widget. I can add here a widget. I have added here two widgets for time. Okay, I've added here another widget for the battery status. Okay, so this is completely different than the previous desktop environment. And even when I try to log out, I will log out from a different place and from a, and by a different manner. I will click on this icon here and I can click leave. The previous one I had to click on an icon that was placed here, but that is a, a, a completely different desktop environment. And now I have logged out in this environment. I am logging back to my previous one, which is Genome. I will have to change the environment here to be Ubuntu default instead of the Plasma KDE. And I am logging back to my original desktop environment. So switching between the environments is fairly easy. You can install as many environments as you like. Okay, and seems that one of my one of the programs has crashed. It's okay. And now I'm back to my desktop environment, my digital desktop environment. It's a matter of actually it's a matter of preference which environment to use. Now the most important thing provided by any desktop environment is the ability to let you launch 
programs. So the presence of the desktop environment is originally intended for making it easy for you to launch the program. So if you're in a text mode, some people find it fairly difficult to type in the name or the path of the program they want to launch. So the desktop environment makes it easier and more interactive for you to find and launch your programs. So how can you launch a program? In a desktop environment, you will find that the icon of the program can be placed either on the desktop itself, here, for example, or in this bar, as you can see here, this is sometimes it's called the taskbar or the launch bar. It can also be present here in this panel. This is called a panel. Perhaps I should make this full screen to be clearer for you. So I can launch a program just by double clicking its icon or single clicking its icon like this. So I can launch Firefox from this launch bar like this by a single click on its icon. And in a moment, it is going to show up. This is Firefox. Also, you can right click on your desktop to display a context menu. This is called a context menu. A context menu is the one that gets displayed when you right click with your mouse on somewhere on your desktop or on an icon. So, so this is a context menu. And inside the context menu, you can find a command like this, which will open a program. Click on open terminal, and this will open this window, this window is called the terminal, and it is just a way by which you can interact with Ubuntu through the text interface, although you are inside the GUI interface or the desktop interface. This is just a way of opening a terminal window to Ubuntu. So this is a program, it's called, it's called a terminal, and it was opened by right-clicking on the desktop and clicking on open terminal. I can open another window here, okay? And the most powerful way of opening programs in Ubuntu is by clicking on this icon, which was labeled search your computer. You can just open the search button and you can search for anything you want, not just the name of the program, but even its functionality. If you search for, for example, Word, as you can see here, Word is not the name of the program. This is called LibreOffice Writer, but Ubuntu is intelligent enough to give you the most appropriate program that you may need. So if I tap here Word, I will find LibreOffice Writer, which of course is the counterpart of Microsoft Word. And here we go, it opens. Okay, I can type here Terminal. As you can see here, this is the name of the, of the program that is I've just opened here, which is called Terminal. But if I'm coming from Windows environment and I decided to write CMD as the same way I write it in Microsoft Windows to open my CMD terminal, which looks similar like this one, I will be presented also by the terminal application. So this icon is your friend. You can type here whatever program name or program function that you might think of. And if it is installed, it will get displayed here. Calendar, for example, as you can see here, I have here the calendar that is installed in Ubuntu and also have the evolution which is one of the main clients, and K-Organizer. All these programs provide a calendar application for you. And as you can see, although calendar is not the name of all of them, except this one in the middle, it's not the name of Evolution. It's called Evolution Mailing Calendar. So it's not, it's so calendar here is part of the name. And here it is not even in the name. It's not even part of the name. But since it is one of the functions that K-Organizer provides, it was displayed for you. And of course, one of the most important tasks that any desktop environment should provide is a way to manage your files. If you're coming from a Windows environment, you sure have worked with the Windows Explorer in order to work with your files and folders, add files, copy them, paste them, rename them, delete them, create new files, and so on. Also, if you're coming from a Mac environment, you sure have worked with the Finder program, which provides fairly the same functionality. In Linux, we have a number of file management utilities, the most important one of which, or the most common one, is called Nautilus. Okay, so Nautilus can be opened by clicking on this icon on the left with the file cabinet icon, and this will open this window for you, which contains the files and folders that you can work with. Now, the default folder that Nautilus opens for you is called the home folder. And the home folder is a place where the user places his or her own documents, movies, music files, project files, or anything related to the user. Anything that is not related to the system, anything that is related, related to the user, should normally be placed here. 
So as you can see here inside the home, I have my desktop, my documents, my downloads, my music, pictures, public templates. Okay, and they are also displayed on the left hand side of Nautilus. So the desktop can be accessed from here. The same way you can access them from here. This is just for your own convenience. You also have the trash, which is the equivalent of the recycle bin in Windows. Anything you delete will be placed in this directory called trash, where it can be restored again when necessary. And finally, we have here the network. And the network here, you can connect to other computers on the network. Of course, if they have shared directories, and of course, if they are in the same network as you are, perhaps this may need some configuration before it can work as expected. And if you click here on computer, you will be presented with all the, fo the files and folders on your computer. This is just, this is like the C drive in Windows. However, in Linux, as we said before, there are there are there is no concept of drive letters like C, D, E, and F. They are all placed in one large directory called root, from which other directories or other file systems stem. So here you have these are system files. You should not play with these system files unless you know what you're doing. So this is the EDC, for example, it contains the configuration files. This is the home directory again of not only you but all the users that are on the system. So if you have other users, then myself, their names will be placed here, each in his own folder. We also have var and opt. These are all system folders that should not be used in order to store any personal files. You should always store any personal files in this directory. And finally, from this, I can connect to server. You can connect to a server that provides access to files, for example, like a Samba server. And a Samba server is just a name for a file that, for a server that shares files with Windows, or an NFS server. And an NFS server is just a server that provides file sharing for only Linux. Don't worry about these terms. We are going to discuss them later in this course, and you're going to know what is the difference between both. Just understand for the moment that connect to the server here will let you connect to a server using some protocol like Samba, for example. And in the next lecture, we're going to study some of the open source or free programs. And you're going to see for yourself the power of open source and programs that get bundled with Linux. So stay tuned.